What's up, Stripe Nation? Blake Alvarez here with B&B Lawn Care. We just got back from the 2018 GIE Expo, and there was a few things that I thought you would know. I, instead of just filming everything that went on, first off, Natalie and I were both sick, so we didn't film like every interaction like we did last year. Obviously, she's sick, but um, and I didn't really even film everything there, but I filmed the things there was a lot of stuff the same. Like it, it seemed like a lot of them were just the booths from last year, but there was a few new things, few good, super cool, a few okay, and a few that were well, really one in particular that was just like it. It was it was bad. It was bad. It, I, I can't even believe that it, that they have that out for sale. So I thought we'd talk about it. Videos. Hey, what's up guys? Hi. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Alright guys, so not only did we meet hundreds of people from the Stripe Nation, dude, which was super cool. I love meeting and connecting with everybody. But, let's talk about the equipment. So, there was Skag, Ferris, um, Billy Goat, they all launched new stand-on blowers. Pretty cool, I guess this is like a new race to see who has the best stand-on blower. But um, I'll, I'll tell you, the Skag one looks awesome because it would match your fleet perfectly if you ran all Skags. It looks just like they, a Skag V-Ride 2 with a huge awesome looking blower on the front. But the one that looks the most refined and the toughest is actually the Billy Goat. The Billy Goat bought out Hurricane, but it looks like they're a few years ahead, which they are because they, they brought in that Hurricane line, which has been around for a very long time. But yeah, definitely that, that, uh, that Billy Goat looks, looks pretty cool. Uh, they all look awesome, but the Billy Goat in specific, Ditch Witch, and I'll tell you, uh, the, the ones coming up, the Dingo, did from GIE in specific, it looks like these companies are on a race to come up with the perfect battery powered equipment. I don't know if it's gonna happen. I, I don't think it's there yet. You guys will find out why in a minute. The, the worst product I saw was battery, and it, it was, dude, it's so far behind on that technology. Handheld stuff um, came from a few companies. Craftsman was there. DeWalt actually wasn't there this year. As you know, they bought out Craftsman, so that was kind of the DeWalt family booth. Um, pretty cool. We've already tried out a lot of their stuff. I think I think they're they're getting there. Um, there there was a lot of like com not major brand companies. Their equipment looks okay. As you know, I I didn't really test any of that out. Uh, Ego man, I, I I have one of the handheld blowers. I think. Battery technology, Ego probably is up there. Steel, I haven't tested their stuff out in the field, so I don't know how their battery stuff is, is, is currently, but uh, Ego and Steel definitely are, are the biggest competitors right now, I, I believe, in that race. And I, I, think, I think battery's still a few years behind, but it's getting better. Gravely actually had a prototype that they're having out in the field testing. Gravely pa battery powered zero turn. It looks pretty good. It was it was the best battery powered mower zero turn mower there at the show that I tested. Out. I mean, it, it operated. It worked, dude. Like it, it it was a silent mower basically. And uh, the the ugly of this group, you'll see here in a minute. It was ugly. They, they're they're very far behind. Gravely, I think they're doing good things with that battery powered zero turn. All right, guys, this next product is an absolute game changer. This is the Mulch Mate. Look how easy, quick. This holds up to 10 yards of mulch, and it attaches right onto your truck bed. So look at that. Filled up a wheelbarrow in less than two seconds. Super, super awesome. Think of how much time we spend scooping out of the truck and just 
pitchforks and pitchforks and even making a mess when we dump on the streets. So this is all about efficiency, guys. Check this out. It's the Mulch Mate. Uh, yeah, come see him if you're, if you're at the GIE. As though when I get my head on something, I can't get it out. In the robotic world, there in the mower, robotic mowers, there was a lot of them there. Honda, Steel, Husqvarna, um, there was a couple like off-brand mowers, but like there was a lot of competitors out there with the robot mower game. And I'll tell you, I don't know this for sure, but Steel's looks good. I, I, I believe in Steel as a brand. I think, I think reliability will be there with Steel. And I think the program, the way the steel works, actually functions, I think like the software behind it is probably the best. I don't know that, because you guys know I'm, I'm trying to get into that game. I think it's, I think it's the future, I think it's cool. Um, and I, I just, I'm just speculating. I think steel probably has the best software. But, Husqvarna's looks tough. They actually have a commercial series one. Like one that they are, they have a residential one and they have one for guys to literally put on properties that they do and have the customer pay them and the mower just sleeps there and works. Uh, so I think they're, I think hardware wise, the Husqvarna, I think it's there, man. It, it looks beefy, it looks tough enough to be out in the weather, out in the elements, but Honda, is the, it's like the Honda Mimo, was the only robotic mower out in the demo area, totally on its own, out in, in a huge area, just going to work, where people are walking by. Steels, Husqvarna, and all the other brands, the, the not so known brands, were all in a caged in, confined area where people weren't walking. Honda's mower was out in the demo area, in their booth, just going to work when people were walking by. So Honda might be the most advanced because it was actually out, like they trusted it enough to be out there in the demo area where people were walking around. So from what it looked like from the show, Honda's Mimo took the robotic mower the, the, the head, man, I, I, think, I think they're there. Uh, the last coolest thing, listen, skid steers, I tried the case, I tried the cat. The cases, I don't know much about them, but dude, they were definitely like, I had fun driving them. I, I, I'm, I don't even, I can't even talk about them because I don't know my stuff on it, but they were, the, they were fun to drive, super cool people, and shout out to them because they watched the videos, but, Plows, man. Um, they have like steel thing, like obstructions dug into the dirt, and literally for three days straight out in the demo area, they had a humongous loader just going over these areas, showing their technology. Whenever you hit a bump when you're plowing a parking lot, how it goes up and doesn't damage the plow at all. Here's some video of it, but dude, talk about crazy like for me I'm not in a plowing game but to see that like it makes all the other snow plows look a little wimpy because this just goes right I mean just you, you can hear it man like just goes right over those obstructions no damage to anything that's pretty cool to see the bad uh, there are two products that I have here that I personally tried out one the X mark Starus, the their their new stand-on mower, and Brian's on maintenance, man. He might not be too happy with me when I say this, because uh, it looked like he really enjoyed it. I did not. I think it's I think it's a funky-looking machine. Obviously, we can't tell cut quality when we're there at the show, so that's something we'll have to test out in the field. But it looks weird. Uh, the it, it drives fine. But the things are kind, it's just kind of awkward to use after using other stand on mowers. The controls seemed a little thin and cheapy feeling. And also, when we were there, obviously it could be just a lemon, but the engine, I think a Welch plug fell out or something 
on it was broke because the engine was room, room. Really weird. I don't know why they didn't try that out. Also, there's a the plastic cover on the back where your knees will go underneath the, the pad. There is plastic cover covering up the engine and all the components in it. I thought that was a little weird. And uh, yeah, just a, kind of a weird machine. And uh, number two, and this is so surprising, the Toro Dingo, the 2000, the huge one, the big boy. Uh, I was really excited to use this. I didn't realize how big it was. It's literally the size of a normal skid steer, but you stand on it. Cool, sweet concept, $60,000, and the controls, this is what I was told, is that when you move it, it goes through a computer and it tells the machine how to move. It was very delayed. You pull back, the tr you pull back and then wait a couple seconds and then it goes. I would think it'd be really, really responsive, especially when you're moving things and you know there might be a fence, it might be a house, a car, whatever in the way you need to get out of there, you know, move the machine really quickly. Very slow, very weird. For $60,000, even when I'm just playing around with it, I wasn't that impressed, man. And I've used Dingoes for the past couple years, fairly, I mean, not every day, not every week, but I've used them a lot. I've probably done 20, 25 mulch, mulch slash rock jobs with them. Uh, I really love the Toro Dingo 1000s, but I can't believe that that 2000 didn't like blow everybody's mind. And the consensus when I was talking to people about it was they, they, they weren't impressed and they, they didn't really like it, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of people just said, I'll just go to, with a normal skid steer or stay with my, my Dingo 1000. So that was kind of the consensus, guys. All right, now for the ugly, probably, oh my gosh, the worst product I saw at GIE was the Greenworks Commercial stand on mower totally battery operated battery powered it felt like a kid's toy it was so unresponsive it wasn't even funny i drove it around you'll notice it's like i don't know what i'm doing and uh you guys know those like power wheels like as a kid they used to have like corvettes and you push the pedal and it's like and it moved forward and then you push it again and it moved forward a little more that's what it was. You put this, you push this, push the sticks forward and you'd, you'd roll for like three seconds if you let go. Like it, you push them, let go, and it'd roll for three seconds. You go one way and it'd go way more than you wanted. I can't believe, dude, they need to send me one just so I can hopefully prove myself wrong. But from what I saw the show, how to be. Dude, it, it was it was just bad. Like, I couldn't even believe. Like, it would if you were using it on a property. I I truly believe you would hit the house, hit the fences, and damage the property. It doesn't, it doesn't crack. It doesn't crack very good. The first yard you do it. It, it was. It doesn't. It doesn't crack. It doesn't crack behind, very dude. Good. Like, I don't know, man. I I was speechless. I, there was nothing more I could say. Definitely the worst product I I saw at GIE. Uh, it, it was just unresponsive, dude. Like, we weren't even cutting grass. And I was just like, everybody on it looked like they were drunk. Like, they could not control it. And these are all professional lawn care guys that can't control a mower. I can't believe, I can't imagine, like, if you had a brand new employee and you were trying to train on that. I don't even know if I could do it. Like, even if I had a month with it, I don't think I could get the hang of it. It's pretty bad. But, guys, the show was awesome. Um, if you haven't went, you have to go. Check out the road to, to the 2019 GIE because we're already warming up, man. Naylor puts on a, he organizes this YouTube rally every year. It was crazy, man. There was 475 lawn care people there. People from YouTube, Facebook, whatever, but you're making connections with people. We had free food, free shirts, free everything, free hats, everything but it was the connections you can make. All, all the YouTube people there that you watch, whether you care or not to meet them, they have so much knowledge. People there, there's guys doing $10 million, there's guys doing $10,000, like everywhere in between, and uh, it's, you need to go there and make, make connections. 
and uh, it was absolutely awesome show. I uh, met some awesome people I never met before. I'm, I'm really mad. Ryan Knorr, you guys know he's a, he's a cool, cool guy. Uh, got a YouTube channel. Uh, Jake the Lawn Kid, awesome kid. I didn't get to meet these guys. Alan Hayne, the lawn care nut. I've been watching him forever. I looked all around the show for him. I could not find him. So I'm, I'm kind of upset I didn't get to meet those guys. Uh, but I met so many cool people. Of course, you guys know the Stan, Brian, Keith, Andy, all these guys. But Tigran came from, from California. He's, he's a super cool guy. Um, Terrell fixes all. <laughs> I just met him for the first time. Uh, just what's going on guys? I'm here with Terrell fixes all for like you guys didn't come last year No, but two years ago. I was looking around, but I couldn't find you, but I finally found them here he found and me. I had to come say hi Hi <laughs> Glad to meet you. That's awesome, man a fellow youtuber dude awesome people Really dude. this community is absolutely awesome the GIE is awesome. It's a place to grow. I learned so much stuff and I cannot wait for another. Dude, we're just, I, I'm, I'm motivated, man. I'm ready. I'm ready to be back in the game. We're going to do some awesome changes here. And uh, I, I really think it, it helped me grow my business, my life, everything in between. So GIE, it was awesome. Another great year. Hey, I appreciate you guys being here, staying along with me. And that's all I got. That was the good, bad, and the ugly from the 2018 GIE. We'll see you in the next one. Make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace.